specifically, we're working on how to transition boys into men. And we define it this way. Boys are takers, men are givers. Mm. So boys are me, me, I, I, it's all self. But men, real men, like Jesus' men, are thinking of others. They're outward and uh, attentive to others and others first and all of that kind of thing. So how do we transition in a boy's really in his core, in the center? How do we transition him from one day that selfish, I, I, me, me guy to the other, the flip of that, which is I am now committed to others, to thinking of and serving and, and preparing myself to be the best for others. I lived in East Africa for 10 years doing a rural church effort there. And um, we lived with people in villages and learned language and huts and the whole thing, you know, all that stuff you would think about. And I, so I learned a lot while I was there. I mean, I, I went to teach, but I learned a lot. And uh, one of the things I observed was uh, every year, this particular tribal group that we were uh, affiliated with, they every year in December, they have a month of seclusion where they take some of their boys and they the men will take them off and they initiate them. They have a rite of passage kind of thing where for a month they're in seclusion and they're tr they, they have some things that they do, some rituals and such, and they but they have some content and the content is telling them, here's what a Try a member, a man who's a member of this tribe. These are the traits of that man. Hmm. Here's what he does. Here's what he doesn't do. Very practical stuff. Now, I wasn't privy to all of that. Uh, it's very secretive, but we learned some. And uh, the content's not the stuff that I would teach my sons uh, or you would teach yours. But it was. But the process, the pattern, it, it was great. It was very effective, I should say. I mean, those boys went in as young kids. 13 to 17 years old. And when they came out after a month, they, you could see it in their, their posture, in their, everything about them oozed. I am a man now, not a, not a boastful, proud thing, but just confidence. And, um, I don't know it was a transformation on the inside that was obvious on the outside, whole community participated in it. And it was, I said, wow, this, whatever they did. I want to know because I want to use that with my sons to move them to being mature, being man, you know, um, grown rather than being kids and selfish. So we borrow, I learned more about the, uh, the whole study of rite of passage and all of that. And it's all over the world in all kinds of forms, every culture, except ours, uh, the West doesn't really have rites of passage. It's not hazing, you know, it's not loincloth around the bonfire thing. It's not hot coals. It's not that stuff. Um, and it, and it, it contains some, uh, uh, three common pieces. One is an invitation where the men say, come, you come away and be a man. So there's an invitation and there's a time of liminality where they're in limbo between boy and man, not fully boy, not yet a man, kind of that thing. And then there's a, a re reassimilation, you know, they come back into the community and now they're viewed as different as being, uh, able to be married or able to own property or whatever. There's some changes in the way that the community, the village views them. And um, like with the folks we worked with, a, a boy couldn't speak in an assembly. But later as he comes out, he now has earned the ability to stand and speak among men in an assembly as an example. So we don't have that. So I took those pieces and on my son's trip trips, we developed those and added a, another at the end uh, so that I take my son's, we call it core, C-O-R-E. So calling, invitation, come on, come, son, one of these days, here's how I do it. Son, one of these days when you are 13, I'm going to take you on a trip. Me and you, just the two of us, and we're going to talk about being a man. Mm. I can't wait to tell you, it's going to be great. Mm. That's all I tell him. And then the year before he turns 13, I say, oh, you want to go? I, you know, I get his buy-in and he'll say, yeah. So every year on the birthday, I re remind them of that, but I don't give any details. A little mystery is useful, you know, like Christmas gifts, you wrap them up. Why? Because mystery is kind of a, a fun part of it too. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and then I take them on the trip. So that's calling and then orientation is the time where you break them down to build them up. It's where you disorient them a little bit, new places, new things. They don't know what's going on and you guide them. They learn to listen to you. They learn to build, they learn to, they can trust you when they listen to you. 
And there's a lot of conversation there, and that's what I, we made an outline and an idea, the whole bag of ideas that dads can choose from about how to reconstruct this boy so that he listens to you. And you got to have his ear going out into those years. So how can he listen to you and how do you get his ear and how do you get him to trust you as well? Um, and then there are commitments that are made there that are directed towards how he's going to behave towards his family and his neighbors and friends and enemies. And um, so all of that's conversational stuff we prepared and any dad, can, he can do it. And then there's the, re, the uh, we call it the re-entry, C-O-R, now the re-entry. So they come back and there's a community event there that's planned. It's, it's a big deal. I mean, it's a, it can be, it should be a big deal. And it's so, um, helpful because it, 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 it's like the solidifies the, the cement of what was formed out there on the trip, whatever kind of trip dad's going to take him on. When they come back, he just makes it firm because now he has people who he's accountable to, who will know, oh, this is what you're going to be. This is the way you've decided to live. And they kind of look for him to do that. So it's really good for him, really great for the community. And then afterwards, our our uh, acronym is C-O-R-E, so the E is ethos, which is living the uh, promises, the pledges, living up. How do we live out the commitments that we made back there uh, in transitioning? And so that's where dad and son ongoing continue that. It's really discipleship um, is what that part is. And so dads are making disciples of their sons in a way that's fun and um, positive. And the boy knows he's getting grip. He's really can see the traction in his life. And he's moving away from this childish ways into more mature adult ways. It, for us and for the dads that I've shown it to, uh, Jeremy, and who tried it, we've not yet had one come back and say, oh, it was a waste of time. It didn't work. Uh, what I hear is, I'm afraid I'm going to blow it. That's what they say. I'm scared. I'm not sure if I can do this. I don't know if I can do this. And I say, whatever you do will be the right. It's enough because you've shown him you care and you love him and you're on his team. Just the effort is yes. important. Yeah. So they kind of cross their fingers and go out there and hope that they can do it. And they come back and the dads are, the dads are relieved. And they say to me, Stephen, it was better than I expected. Oh, it was so, things happen I didn't expect. Mm. And that's part of the beauty, Jeremy, is that every trip, something happens that's not planned. And I tell the guys that's God's plan in it. The serendipity, and that will be the most meaningful piece of the whole trip. It's guaranteed. Always happens. And uh, be most meaningful for both of you, you know, for you and him. So, um, so anyway, we call it the core of the, these trips, we call them man abouts. Yeah, uh, and like the walk, the walkabout thing. So we call them yes. the about, and, uh, and it works. And so we want dads to have it. This is what mm -hmm. my son meant when he said, dad, you need to tell others. So we, we want him to have it and use it.